Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Harry Wolf and I talk about code on this channel. Today I have a not quite hot take for you. Next.js is the best React framework full stop. If you don't already use Next.js as your go-to React framework, well, this video should hopefully convince you to make a change and make Next.js your new default go-to. If you already use Next.js, then click off the video, go have fun outside in the sun. But for those of you still on the fence, I have a very rich outline of points to convince you about why Next.js is fantastic. From discussions of what is a framework, why is it a reactive framework, and what makes Next.js so great, these are things that if they sound interesting to you, then please keep watching. With that being said, let's get on with the persuasion. First things first, why isn't React a framework? Well, don't take my word for it, just check its website where it calls itself a library. I, the line between library and framework is a little bit gray sometimes, but the way that I typically sum it up is a library typically does one thing well and one thing only. And in that case for React, it's making UI, user interfaces. It does that really well, really easily, really efficiently. Frameworks, on the other hand, do a whole lot more. The best example of a framework is Ruby on Rails, Spring Boot, uh, Django. These are massive code frameworks that do pretty much everything that you need for an application for free, batteries included. So what makes Next.js a framework then? Well, aside from its website telling me so, man, these websites make my job really easy. It essentially does a lot for you by default. It has lovely, strong, and consistent conventions that let you not worry about configuring your application, but making your application. And in the world of React, that is something that hasn't been around in a while. So what does Next.js provide for you out of the box? Uh, in short, a lot. It has a lot of things, but one of the things that I love most about Next.js is it kind of blends the world of Node, where everything is small, you kind of add things as you need, and it blends the world of frameworks like Ruby on Rails, which just has everything available by default, and makes this lovely little synergy where Next.js has all these things out of the box, but you only need to use them as you need to. Whereas in other cases, when I've played around with other frameworks, I have found that I've had to kind of learn a lot to get started before I can even get going. Next.js says if all you want to do is just make a plain vanilla React.js app, that's all you need from us and we'll help you along that way. That being said, there are some essential features that Next.js provides for you out of the box for free that are essentially required for making a production quality React app nowadays. The first feature is routing. Uh, this is kind of a hybrid feature, but the first half of this is that it provides conventions on how and where to put your pages. And it follows a convention that's kind of been stolen since the dawn of Markdown blogging time from Jekyll, when Jekyll was released in 2008, if you can believe that. But essentially, if you put a about.js file in the pages folder, then Next.js will render it at slash about. If you've ever written a Markdown blog, this is something that should feel quite at home with you. It also provides dynamic routes for things that might not be as statically necessary. But already here, this is incredible because if you were to make a vanilla React app, there's no routing provided by default. You'd have to turn towards React Router or some other routing library and then configure it to actually know how and where to show your routes. With Next.js, it's all convention. You put the file where Next.js expects it to go, and Next.js will just take it from there. And that is just lovely to not have to worry about. Even better is that Next.js has two ways of rendering your pages, which is uh, probably one of the best features of Next.js, in all honesty, above all things else. Uh, Next.js both supports static generation, which again, Markdown Blogs is its favorite friend. Markdown Blogs love static generation caching for days or server-side rendering. You know, how web pages used to be made in the 90s before static site hosting was invented. That was a, that was a joke. 
Um, but the thing that's amazing about Next.js is that you can choose per page which rendering method you want, which is incredible. It's one of those things that when you hear it for the first time, you wonder why it was never not the case before. And the way that you opt in and out is pretty, pretty simple, following the conventions that Next.js expects from you. Feature the second is a incredible default developer experience. And this is best summed up with four of the top features of Next.js. The first one is built-in CSS support. Every web application needs styling of some variety, usually CSS, and Next.js has a solution for you. Not only does it have one solution, it has three solutions, which again, a, uh, a glut of riches. You have just importing plain style sheets if you want, just like this, so you can write regular old CSS and it works just as you're writing an HTML page, which is fine, but not probably how you wanna write modern web applications nowadays. Um, you can do component level CSS via CSS modules, where you fall again, the convention of name module. Uh, CSS modules is a wonderful way of scoping CSS to just a file. That's a whole separate video to talk about here, but importing styles from the styles and then using it as you want built in out of the box for free next JS. And of course, uh, last but not least is built in CSS and JS support. And this is done either by inline styles, which is lol, or they bundle in their own style GX solution, which uh, I'm not a personal fan of. It works fine, just not my preference. But if you want to add your own CSS and JS solution, then that's an easy thing to do by following a simple walkthrough guide. Out of the box, Next.js supports fast refresh, which is a feature that is the successor to live reload. Uh, essentially, Live Reload was you save a file, the website refreshed and showed you the changes. Fast Refresh takes it up a notch where no refresh is required. Uh, as you make your website and you change a file, Next.js will push that file to the browser and then discreetly update just the component that changes, maintaining state. Which means that if you have a button with a counter that you are incrementing the count and you change the color of that button on your source code, when you save that, it's pushed to the browser with the new color and the state saved. It is, once you go fast refresh, there is no going back. The developer experience here is incredible. I, I, I can never accept anything less than fast refresh having expressed it here. Uh, for If you've never done fast refresh, I encourage you to use Next.js just to try it out to see how incredibly amazing it is to play around with. Out of the box, ES Lint support. This is oddly a new addition to Next.js for reasons I don't know, but it's now here. So you'll have some nice basic default ES Lint rules to make sure that you have the most Lint free web application possible. Built in by default, no configuration required. And of course, last but not least is TypeScript support, which is actually an opt in and not provided by default, but is provided out of the box. And what I mean by that is that when you install a Next.js app, by default, it's not included unless you opt into it. But if you have an existing vanilla Next.js app, you can add TypeScript support by just creating an empty tsconfig.js JSON file. And once Next.js starts up the next time, it'll see that it exists and then ask you to configure TypeScript support for your Next.js application. It is just wonderful experience. And in some ways, I'd argue this is not even uh, config for Next.js. Uh, if you want to use TypeScript, you need to have a tsconfig.json file. So in many ways, you're just creating a config file for TypeScript that Next.js realizes is there and then uses to add support to TypeScript to your application. This is it. This is all you need to do. Restart your Next.js server and it will take it from there. Just an incredible way of adding incremental features as you need it. And as I mentioned before, all these things that I've talked about require no configuration, none. They, 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 there's no configuration required. It is all out of the box for free. Uh, if you want and need to, which for 99% of the time you will not need, you can touch, you can create next, a next config file as an escape hatch as you need it. But again, it is rare that you will ever need that. 
So for all these common use cases, it's just built in by default, no configuration required. The conventions are that good, that sensible, that makes the developer experience that enjoyable. Uh, and there's a bonus fourth feature is that because Next.js is just one dependency in your JSON file, as it adds new features and as you update your Next.js version, you get, all, you get all the new features along with it, making it extremely easy to upgrade and also to, to benefit from new things that are added. A new thing that was added in version 10 was built-in image optimization support via the image, the Next.js image component. This is similar to how you might see, uh, I think it has like, you know, the way that you see websites blur things from a lower res to a higher res. This is now built in, provided for you for free by Next.js team. Um, upgrading is typically very minimal as well. There is a upgrade guide if you need it, but typically the changes that you need are sometimes none and in, and in the most extreme cases, very minimal and less than an hour's worth of time. So. As new things are added and you update to the latest version of Next.js, then you are ready to take advantage of all the latest, greatest things. I'd be doing you a disservice if I didn't admit that there are a few things that Next.js is missing that kind of uh, not make it a full framework in my opinion. However, there are mitigation steps that kind of make these issues pretty trivial. Uh, the first is a comprehensive data fetching solution. Um, there's this data fetching guide and there are API endpoints on where you can fetch data, whether at build time or um, server-side rendering, but the, there's no integrated, fully thought through solution on how to actually do data fetching and caching and all these things. Um, luckily, there are third-party solutions that kind of fill that gap wonderfully. My personal favorite is something called React Query, um, which fills that gap very easily, it has a whole guide on how to integrate with Next.js if you need to. Um, and it looks kind of like this, a provider making queries. And there's also SWR, which is actually written by the same people who write Next.js if you want to have that kind of uh, cohesiveness there. But it's actually incredible how similar these two libraries all are, which begs the question why they both exist, but that's a question for another day. Um, related to data fetching, there's also no built-in database support in Next.js. You're expected to kind of uh, bring your own. Um, luckily, Next.js has a huge repo of example integrations with third-party libraries and other things. And one of those is examples how to integrate with databases. Uh, my personal favorite, if it's no surprise, is MongoDB, where there's a nice little example on how to integrate um, Next.js with a MongoDB database with a example here and an example of its usage right in here. This is kind of the uh, jumpstart way to get started with that. And last but not least is authentication. Uh, there's no built-in way of doing authentication with Next.js, which is probably due to there being no built-in way of doing a database and doing data fetching. So those kind of three things all go together, which is why I think they're all missing from Next.js. But again, there are some lovely third-party solutions that integrate very cleanly with Next.js that kind of mitigates the issue that it's not there by default. Uh, not every app needs authentication. Apps do, but not every web page does. And there's examples here on how to use it. My personal favorite for auth is this library called NextAuthJS, which I find to be just the most wonderful way of doing auth with Next.js. It just makes it stupid simple to integrate with any provider that you might need, Apple, Facebook, Google, email. And it's also great because you own all the data. It's open source, you connect to your own database, and there's no third party required to actually get it running. It's just code, which is awesome. So let's talk about competitors in this landscape. And there's only three that I'm gonna talk about just to not go for infinity and other things in the same area. Um, the first competitor, which I wouldn't really call it one, is Create React App, which is you know the tried and true Create React App to get a React App up and running. Um, it's truly not in the same category as Next.js. Uh, it, it's really, in my opinion, just a wrapper around a complicated Webpack configuration file, which uh, is not to minimize the value that provides because Webpack is tremendously difficult, but it doesn't really provide all the niceties that Next.js does by default. It's mostly just a starter kit with some nice defaults that are provided by Webpack, but not much beyond React and Webpack itself. It just lets you get going and kind of stops from there. 
Uh, and honestly, the thing that is my biggest pet peeve about Create React App is that it is uh, configuration adverse. There is no way to configure any behavior in a Create React App applications. And if you just wanna add CSS and JS support, that becomes a whole ordeal that is very hard to do with the Create React app. And for that reason alone, in many cases, I find just turning towards Next.js, which might be overkill for certain things, uh, just to be easier for my whole development model. There's Byte, which is funnily enough made by, created by the creator of uh, uh, Vue.js, um, which is just funny to me. Uh, it's a build tool, it's kind of like a webpack on steroids in some ways, but um, zero config as well, sensible defaults, but it's kind of built to just be for any front-end application. Uh, it has templates for any type of framework if you want. So in that sense, it kind of targets the front-end landscape, not React itself, meaning there's not many React-specific features provided by that, which is fine, but again, kind of lacks the uh, framework niche of Vite, Vite, I don't know how to say it. And last but not least, there is uh, Blitz.js, which Funnily enough, is actually built on top of Next.js, which is cheating, but also great because uh, it gets all the benefits of Next.js and then kind of brings in the missing pieces that I have lamented myself. Those being authentication, which it provides, authent, has built-in authentication, built-in database support as well, and also a data fetching solution as well. All things provided by default, it is truly a frameworks framework, a meta framework, all those things, but uh, I haven't used it extensively, so I can't really speak to it, but if you wanna have more things built in by default, Blitz.js is probably the way to go for you. So, hopefully that wasn't too much. That's my reasons for why Next.js is the best React framework. In many ways, it is the only React framework in the truest sense of the word of a framework, in my opinion, outside of Blitz.js, which it's built on Next.js again. Um, if you're making a React app today, whether a simple, just single page app, all client side facing, or a full stack Next.js uh, React app from you know Node Server and all those things, Next.js kind of caters to both those use cases, which is incredible. You can kind of have your cake and eat it too and kind of transition as you need to here and there. Uh, amazing defaults. Uh, you can extend it as you need to. It's truly nailed everything that you'd want from a developer framework. So curious if you don't use Next.js, why? What are the reasons? What could possibly be the reasons I am so curious to know? Let me know in the comments. I'll happily chat with you in there to see what is not, why you said pass on Next.js. Curious to hear. That is this week's video. I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you again in next week's video when it is online. Until then, stay happy, stay coding.